welcome to the topic uh, deflection of beams problems and solutions deflection of pre stressed concrete beams concept uh, already explained but here before going to <coughs> problems and solutions it is better to recall all the formulas once again i will go one by one a simply supported beam carrying a central concentrated load the formula is w l cube divided by 48 a a simply supported beam carrying udl 5 w l raise to 4 divided by 384 a and uh, pre stressing force will create a deflection and there are different uh, cable profiles i will discuss first one is a triangular shape cable here uh, this cable is having a eccentricity at the ends if the eccentricity is there at the ends there is a end moment that is uh, m equal to p into that eccentricity that is eccentricity at the ends is e2 because of this triangular shape of the cable there is a creation of upward point load that is 2p tan theta tan theta is opposite by adjacent which is opposite suppose uh, this is theta if you draw this is the triangle this in this triangle opposite is e1 plus e2 and this is adjacent is l by 2 e1 plus e2 by l by 2 <coughs> that is uh, a point load that is just uh, due to the cable profile triangular cable profile this uh, case will create two deflection that is one due to m another due to this uh, point load this will create a downward deflection and this will create a upward deflection total deflection due to the pre stressing force is ml square by 80a minus wc into l cube divided by 48a if uh, this e2 is zero that means eccentricity at the end c is zero this uh, moment will vanish then only this wc exist then uh, only one eccentricity is that that is e1 that can be taken as e then tan theta will be simply e divided by l by 2 e divided by l by 2 because of uh, there is no m only wc is there the formula is wc l cube divided by 48 a the negative sign is this will create a upward deflection next <clears throat> this is another cable profile this is a parabolic or curved profile here eccentricity at the end c is e2 once eccentricity is there at the uh, end then again moment is there as in the similar as in the last case and because of this cable profile instead of this point load creation wc created in the previous case was a point load because of triangular shape because of this uh, curved shape there is a creation of a udl that is 8 pe by l square 8 pe by l square this e is total eccentricity e1 plus e2 here uh, two forces are responsible for deflection this is moment and this is one is one will create a downward deflection another is upward deflection That's why the ml square by 80a minus udl formula is 5w l raised to 4 divided by 384 ea. As in the previous case, suppose if you make uh, at the end c2 is zero, then m will vanish. Only e1 exists can be taken as e. Wc is simply 8 pe by l square. E m uh, is not there. Therefore, only one deflection that is due to upward udl 5 wl raised to 4 divided by 384 a <coughs> then uh, due to dead load 
How to calculate deflection? This is again UDL formula is simply 5WL raised to 4 divided by 384A. That formula is known. I am not mentioning again the formula. But how to calculate dead weight? That is volume into density. Volume is B into D into 1 into density of concrete. Here 1 is in meter, density is in kilonewton per meter cube, hence B and D should be in meters. Suppose E is not given, Young's model is not given, FCK must be given. By using FCK, how to calculate uh, Young's model? You know the formula 5700 root FCK. How to calculate moment of inertia? You know BD cube by 12. And sometimes section dimensions are not given, B and D are not given. In that case, cross sectional area is given and uh, Radius of gyration is given. You know the formula for radius of gyration. Radius of gyration K is equal to K is equal to the formula is root of I by A. You know from engineering mechanics. If you simplify this uh, formula, I will become K into A square. Then come to how to calculate uh, short term deflection that is uh, delta due to precessing force, delta due to dead load and delta due to live load. If the deflection at transfer is given in the problem, you calculate only due to P and dead load. If simply short term deflection is asked, you calculate for all the case combination of P, dead, dead load and live load. Long term deflection is considered by considering the loss of pressure and creep coefficient. This is Lin's formula, you know already. Delta of a dead load and live load minus delta of pressure in force and Pf by Pa. This is called as loss ratio into 1 plus 5. This is Lin's ratio, remember it. <coughs> then come to problem. This is the first problem. These are the VTU problems. Some three problems are solved here. You come to the first problem. Here given data is 150 mm. That is cross section dimension. 150 mm is B. Overall depth is 300 mm. The span given is 8 meter. And eccentricity at the center is 80 mm. That is E1. And eccentricity at the ends is 30 mm. And the precessing force is given, that is 350 kilonewton. Sometimes P may not be given directly. In that case, there should be a pre-stress, that is in Newton per mm square. It is uh, above or around 1000 Newton per mm square. And uh, cables are given, number of cables and uh, diameter of the cables are given. That is AS into FS, you will get uh, P. Here P is directly given, there is no problem. And what is the external loads given? External loads are live loads given are 10 kN central concentrated load and the live load is also given WQ. Q is actually external uh, UDL I have mentioned. That is uh, 2 kN per meter. <coughs> Here required data is short term deflection due to pre-stress and sulphite. It is uh, clearly mentioned pre-stress and sulphite. Don't go for adding live load deflection. A short term deflection due to pre stress and sulfate, you just stick to only that much. Then, uh, long term deflection due to pre stress, and there is a loss of uh, pre stress 20 percent and uh, creep coefficient 1.8. And check the deflection as per IS 1343 1980. And let us see the first case short term deflection due to. Pre-stress and sulphide. Here, this is the free body diagram with all loadings. Here, uh, at the end, M is there because at the end there is eccentricity. What is M? It is calculated somewhere here. P into E. E is in mm. It is converted to meter divided by thousand. That is, M is ten point five zero kilonewton meter. And uh, sulphate is calculated by multiplying B into D and 1 meter length is there. It is not written. 25 is the density. 1.125 kilonewton per meter is the 
sulfate that is UDL that is acting downward and uh, due to cable profile there is a upward UDL WC WC is calculated by using the formula 8 PE by L square this E means combination of E1 plus E2 that is 80 plus 30 that is 110 that upward UDL is 4.8125 kN per meter here sulfate is UDL and this WC is also UDL downward and upward I don't combine this UDL because I want a deflection of uh, beam due to dead load separately and deflection due to pre-stress is separate deflection due to pre-stress is due to M and WC deflection due to dead weight I want separately that's why I don't combine these two UDLs I will take it separately <laughs> Now come to deflection, short term deflection due to P and dead load. Due to sulfate, 5WL raised to 4 divided by 384A. This is a positive value because dead weight is acting downward, downward deflection it will create that is 4.931934 downward deflection that is MM. <coughs> then due to WC. It is upward UDL. Here the formula is same for this also. 5WC L raised to 4384A. Here only difference difference is 5 is same, L raised to 4384A. Both all are same. Only UDL is changed. For W's of 1.125, this is the deflection created. For 4.8125, how much? You can use this formula to calculate deflection due to WC or you can go with the formula this one. This takes time unnecessarily that's why you can use this one. Then deflection due to WC is 21.10 it is upward it is actually minus I have not written while combining you can put minus. Deflection due to M, direct formula ML square by 80A, that is 6.904 mm, that is downward. Now short term deflection due to P and dead load, I will combine now. 4.934 is due to dead load, is downward positive. This is due to WC upward deflection minus. This is due to M. On combination final deflection will be 9.262 a negative value that is upward deflection deflection due to P and dead load should be always a negative one you cannot get positive if you get a positive it is simply a foolishness of developing a downward deflection at the transfer Nobody will develop a downward deflection at the transfer. It should be upward deflection because why upward deflection is to balance the downward deflection due to external loads. That's why it is always minus. If you get a positive value, you should be very careful. You should check it once again. <coughs> then come to long term deflection. Considering loss is 20%. Use a Linz formula. Now we want... Uh, deflection due to live load dead load is already in there we can use that one due to live load how much is the deflection let us calculate first delta due to live load is due to point load wl cubed over 48a that is downward that's a positive then uh, external udl that is 2 kilo newton per meter again you can use this formula or this one simplified one that is for 1.125 4.934 for 2 is how much you can directly calculate this is the total deflection due to external loads one is due to point load another is due to UDL totally 17.54 and here PF by PI that is 0.8 because loss is 20%. That loss ratio is 0.8. Use a Linz formula. After using Linz formula, 
what is uh, deflection due to dead load and live load due to dead load 4.934 due to live load both are uh, downward deflection total is 22.474 that is mentioned here minus then due to pre stress only due to pre stress that is this is due to wc this is due to m then the total will be minus 14 point this minus already is there here minus don't use again minus it will become plus that's why it is minus only this no need to use minus once again here this minus is there already <coughs> this minus is there that's why directly you take this 14.196 then after simplification long term deflection is 31.13 mm as per IS 1343-1980 the deflection should be restricted to span divided by 250 that is 8000 divided by 32 mm deflection developed is well within the limit even though if it is more developed is more you cannot do anything because it is not the design problem we are simply checking the deflection how much deflection developed is it within the limit or not you just comment on this this is within the limit it is okay <coughs> then come to second problem here a similar problem but as I said already here cross section dimensions are not given here directly area is given and radius of variation is given and loss is neglected there is no loss and uh, eccentricity at the end C is not given that is zero only eccentricity at the mid span is given here pre-stressing force is not given as I said already area of steel is given six number of uh, cables each cable diameter is 7 mm and definitely fs is given pre-stress 1000 newton per mm square Young's modulus is given directly that is 38 kilo newton per mm square here required data is pre-stress sorry central deflection due to sulfate and pre-stress and due to sulfate pre-stress and live load of 2 kN per meter then come to first case sulfate plus pre-stress <coughs> here sulfate you can calculate sulfate is B into D into 1 into density but here uh, b and d are not given instead of b and d area is directly given therefore you can calculate area is given in uh, mm square that should be converted to meter square divided by 1000 square 24 uh, it is given don't take 25 density of concrete is given therefore dead weight is 0.769 600, 0.768 kilonewton per meter that is here due to cable profile wc will be created wc that is 8 pe by l square here 8 pe by l square 8 p p is calculated here C P is equal to F S A S that is you will get in Newton that should be converted to kilo Newton this much of P and I is also calculated separately that is we know the formula radius of variation is square root of I by A K square is I A then I is equal to K square into A In the previous discussion during uh, 
that discussion in the note it is mentioned as a square but a square is not right k square a is right after simplification of this if you squaring both sides it is k square it is not uh, k into a square remember change it okay self height is acting downward wc is acting upward there is no moment at the ends m is not there only self height will create and this will create deflection here there is no loss and also creep coefficient that's why because of that i am going to combine both otherwise you can calculate separately also self height and um, pre stressing force separately pre stressing force means wc and this is wg dead weight you can calculate dead weight uh, deflection separately and wc separately and then combine otherwise you can combine these two because in the long term deflection or uh, here long term deflection is not there that's why i am going to combine this is downward and this is upward upward is more upward is uh, wc is 1.433 downward is 0.768 if you calculate the net, net udl this is this minus this you will get 0.675 newton per mm or kilo newton per meter <coughs> that means i converted two udl as a single udl if there is a long term deflection is going to calculate means you calculate dead weight ud deflection separately and wc separately okay now converted two udls as a single udl now upward deflection is there that is because of this one 5w l raised to 4 divided by 384 ea here net udl is 0.675 then 5.71 mm instead of writing minus i wrote a sign that is upward sign then come to deflection due to self height pre stress and external load 2 kilo newton per meter already we know this value due to self height and pre stress that is minus 5.71 then this is definitely a downward minus 5.71 for this one this is live load deflection that is 5w l raised to 4 divided by 384 ea otherwise you can calculate this one in a simple way for 0.675 this much for 2 is how much you can calculate that is a simple way as i discussed earlier then uh, the deflection due to p dead load and live load will be 11.21 mm that is downward this is well within the limit l by 250 is 32 mm developed is only 11.21 mm <coughs> then come to third problem here uh, triangular cable is given and here end index end eccentricity is given that is e to 40 mm and at the center deflection sorry at center eccentricity that is uh, 100 mm total span of the beam is 3 plus 3 6 meters and uh, pre stressing force is given 300 kN the loss ratio is given it is not uh, pre stressing pre stress loss it is loss ratio means pf by pa directly given that is 0.8 usually pre stress loss is given in terms of percentage at that time pf by pa you have to calculate here loss ratio is directly given that is 0.8 okay live load is given 8 kN per meter fck is given that means m40 grade of concrete is given that means fck is 40 newton per m square that means angst modulus should be calculated by using this one pre stress is directly given there is no problem here uh, m will be there and again point load is created that wc pre stress will create two deflections one is m another one is due to wc and due to dead weight again deflection is there and due to live load of 8 kN per meter there is a deflection here what is the required uh, data let us see maximum deflection at transfer of pre stress that is due to p and dead load 
Now I will calculate separately because loss is given due to pre-stress I will calculate M and WC what it will create and due to dead load what is the value I am not going to discuss again and again already you know how to calculate M how to calculate WC how to calculate dead load then here this is the FBD uh, of pre-stress that is M and WC and uh, dead load is calculated dead load is calculated separately dead load is D into D into 1 that is separate, separately calculated this is due to pre-stressing force only due to P and WC due to P and WC the formula is ML squared by 8A minus WC into L cubed divided by 48A uh, due to pre-stress delta will be minus 7.49 this dead weight will create a downward deflection that is 5WL rise to 4 divided by 384A that is 1.56 net deflection due to P and dead load P created minus 7.49 this dead load created 1.56 the net deflection due to P and dead load will be minus 5.93 <coughs> then come to maximum deflection at working load that means at live load at live load uh, loss is given once loss is given it definitely a, a long term deflection okay long term deflection uh, should be calculated here uh, phi is not given phi is not given means creep is neglected again you use uh, a Linz formula uh, no need to use this multiplication of 1 plus phi because phi is 0 the remaining will be 1 only delta due to dead load plus live load minus delta p of pf by pi then uh, dead load 1.56 is there and uh, live load is calculated here for uh, in the dead load calculation for 0.9 kilonewton per meter this is the deflection for uh, 8 kilonewton per meter of uh, live load how much that is 8 divided by 0.9 into 1.5 but for 1.9 this is the deflection for 8 it is how much otherwise you can use this formula there is no issue but it takes time okay this is due to live load dead load is there and uh, dead load deflection and live load deflection you add <coughs> then this is separately is there that is uh, minus 7.49 uh, due to m and wc after substituting all in this equation you will get a deflection due to pre-stress dead load and live load will be 9.44 mm and uh, maximum deflection allowed is 24 mm that is well within the limit thank you